right, the last frame you saw was me trying the compact fire piston I made. I love the way it came out, I love the size of it and, and everything else about it, but that was actually two days ago, okay? I played with that thing um, for probably an hour after that last frame that you saw, and I got it to work maybe five times out of a hundred. So it did work, but it just is not reliable. And I think that the throw was too short. Okay, this is just too short. And when this was manufactured, I believe that the tube was pressed with some type of dye where they just mold the metal onto it. So it really wasn't concentric on the inside. So I think I might have been losing air there. And then there was no um, taper here like a countersink where the O-ring could seal in good. Um, I'll put a link in the description to the video that I watched uh, from Clickspring where he made one and he specifies that that seal there is critical because you lose air. So what I ended up doing was turning that little compact fire piston into a container to hold petroleum jelly. So all I did was, this plot's the same, I just plugged this end, made a little container. And I'm going to show you some jigs I use and a couple little uh, methods that I use to make a larger one. Okay, and I'm going to have to drill out the stock, which I was trying to avoid, um, but we'll see how that one comes out. So let me get at that. All right, so this was the main uh, jig that helped me drill the hole centered. Okay, it's just an old drill truck, um, and it's just JB welded into this piece of wood. Okay, and this is a countersink. This is what's going to help me chamfer a hole to make the o-ring seat because you just you can't have any air leakage so um, I'll get this stuff set up over on the drill press and I'll show you how it works okay so this is how you align your jig with your drill press okay so eventually our stock is what's going to go in here into the drill chuck but for till we get that started just put yourself in a um, a drill bit doesn't matter what size okay and then you're going to line up these two until the points touch okay and then you're going to secure this down with either clamps or with screws okay so your stock is what's going to turn this is going to be stationary okay I just have in the countersink bit here but now you would get the drill size you want. You start off with a small one and then gradually get to, to the size that you want, which is going to be um, a quarter inch hole going through, and then one final hole will ream through, um, what is it, 11 something, the next size up from a uh, quarter inch to get it uh, nice and smooth. All right, I'm not going to bore you watching me drill the hole, but basically that's how it goes. You have your drill bit in here and you're moving your stock down and the drill bit is stationary. And then, to put the 45 degree countersink in, you're gonna use this, and that's gonna go in, and you're gonna do the same thing. And you're gonna put your countersink in. And it's all, that's gonna be, you know, uh, trial and error, so you want the, I'll show you on the finished product, um, how the uh, O-ring's supposed to seat on the bottom. So that's how the drill press gets set up and how you drill the tube. All right, so here's our tube, considerably longer than the other one. I'm going to say probably about an inch and a quarter longer than the compact version. All right, so we use the jig to drill this. And then here's our piston, which is considerably longer than this one. All right, about an inch and a half longer, I would guess. Um, this is just a quarter inch rod, the same that thing was done as this was with the little groove put in and a hole drilled on the end and I had to make an end cap so if you could see in here let me get that little grease out of there you got that bevel there 
Okay, that was done with that chamfering bit. Okay, and then I have a little cap here. It goes right on like that. Now this is a stainless steel nut, uh, bolt. Okay, 5 16 bolt. And then I just ground it down. Left it a little, didn't go totally round, so it's kind of got some facets on it. I'm not sure if you could see it. It kind of gives you a little bit of something to grab because this is where you want the seal to be really really good in here okay so the bolt was also cut that's about a quarter of an inch and then if you can see right there is the o-ring that makes that seal against that uh, countersink you get a nice seal and here's the piston as you can see doesn't want to stay in you loosen the screw on the bottom boom it goes in and then you close that up and if you watch see that it goes right back in has great suction so um, let me put the whole kit together with the other accessories and I'll show you it in action all right so here's the finished product I made a um, wax canvas roll I got a couple um, deer antler buttons with some leather straps. They just open up like this. Pull that up. Take that off. I'll put a link on how to make a canvas roll. Roll it open. this first it's a little stiff yet but here's the piston then we have the Vaseline we have a little tool that we made then in this pocket we have two Altoid tins and then in this pocket There is a little cleaning rod, and there's a couple more spare ones in there. And this is just a pressure fit. Comes right off. In case you break it or lose it. And that's just the right size to go right through. And then in here, we have our chalk cloth. And in this one, we have spare o-rings and we have little cotton patches these are just cut from uh, old t-shirt and the, the advantage to this is number one you use them to clean out the um, cylinder and number two you could make chalk cloth with these you could actually use this tin if you ran into a, a bind and you need the chalk cloth you could punch a little hole actually these you don't have to even punch a hole in the Altoid tins. They got enough over here where the hinges are for the gases to escape. You can pretty much just cook chalk cloth in here. So we got that set up and let's give it a test. Okay, so first first time you use it, make sure you put a little bit of lube on this O-ring. So let's pull the piston out. Get a little bit of petroleum jelly out of here. You don't need a lot. Just enough to kind of seal it. Screw that in. Make sure it's pretty tight. Then you're gonna get yourself a little piece of chalk cloth. Just kind of fold it up. Roll it up.
You don't need a lot. Just kind of press it in there. Sometimes I like to take the end of this, just give it a little, clean it up a little bit. Then get a little bit of Vaseline, petroleum jelly. Lube that O-ring. Slip that in there. And if everything works right, we have ignition. So there you go. There's our fire piston. It works great, as you saw. You don't have to slam it. Everything worked out great with this one. And like I said, um, the main idea of that was to be able to loosen this end cap, push this in, close it up, and you're ready to go for the next one. I mean, you can literally slip this in your pocket with the chalk cloth and a little bit of the Vaseline and go. We keep it in that nice roll that I made, and you're good to go. Sorry for the way the video kind of went. Um, I know towards the end there when I was doing this one, it got a little... Uh, uh, I don't know, kind of mixed up, but you know, the beginning part with the compact one is pretty much how you're going to do this with the gluing it in and um, you know, all of that stuff. So, but this one came out really nice. I'm happy with it and I appreciate you watching and um, appreciate all your comments and hope you all having a great day and thanks a bunch.